Dear reader, I'm Tony, and this is Book Text. I am going to share with you my plans for reading in March, but first, the word of the day today is an obsolete 17th century word. It's the verb puppify. To puppify someone is to make them compliant and submissive or to make them a fool. So you might puppify someone that you really don't like. I, I think that's kind of a fun 17th century kind of thing to do. So I have a lot of plans, definitely overly ambitious plans uh, for reading in March. I actually uh, went through my calendar and marked off on each day exactly how many chapters I have to read from each of these books in order to fit them into the month of March. So let's let's just talk about what I want to read. First up is my Thomas Hardy read for March. So I've been participating in a year-long read-along on Instagram for the hashtag 2021ThomasHardy. And the read for March is going to be Far From the Madding Crowd. Definitely one of his most famous works. This is actually his first Wessex novel. So Wessex is the kind of fictional county that many of his books are located in. Um, and this story follows Bathsheba Everdeen and her relationships with three suitors. So in my experience, Thomas Hardy really loves love triangles and he's interested in loyalty, constancy, and their opposites. So I'm expecting to find a lot of that in this book. I never read Far From the Madding Crowd and so I'm very curious about it. Then I have a book for March of the Mammoths, which is a readathon being hosted um, on a couple of channels, and I'll link them down below. But uh, the challenge is to read a book that is over 800 pages. And I have selected quite a mammoth for March. I will be reading The Deed of Paxinarian by Elizabeth Moon. And I've already marked off how much I have to read each day. It's like 40 pages each day because this mammoth is over a thousand pages long. It's actually, also a thousand twenty-four. It is actually a trilogy that has been combined into one volume. This is an, a high epic fantasy um, and it looks at Pax, an 18 year old girl who is fleeing from an arranged marriage and she joins a mercenary company and then, of course, discovers who she is and what she can do along the journey. So I am definitely intimidated by this book because of its size um, and its, its kind of epic fantasy nature. But I am very curious about it. It's been called the perfect heir to Tolkien. Um, so, but, but it was written by a woman and features a woman character. And so I think that is going to be a new take on the genre. Now I have a lot of books in March for March of the Moderns, um, which I'm helping uh, Margaret Pinard to run. It's a readathon uh, that basically just asks you to read books that were written between 1901 and 1945 from anywhere in the world. Um, and so I have selected quite a few books that they've already been on my TBR for a long time, and this is the perfect excuse to read them. So first up is a read-along, it's a buddy read, I should say, with uh, Margaret and then also Marissa from Blatantly Bookish. We will be reading Precious Bane by Mary Webb. And I actually have two copies. This one is an illustrated copy, but it doesn't quite have a nice reading feel, so I might refer to this for illustrations, but I think I'm going to be reading this copy. This was written in 1924. It is the story of Prue Sarn, um, and it's, it's actually historical fiction, so it takes place a long time before 1924. Prue is an independent woman um, with a hair lip, um, which is the titular Precious Bane, is what she calls it. She is striving for making a better life in a rather confining world. So this promises romance, tragedy, drama, the whole gamut, and I am really interested in this. Next, I have a pair of books by one of my favorite authors from this era. The first is Andrew B. Wold by Winifred Holtby, um, and this was written in 1923. It was her first novel, and it features Mary Robson. I think that's her name. Yeah, Mary Robson, who is a young woman in Yorkshire, 
and how she's trying to keep her farm afloat with her rather unromantic husband and what happens when she meets uh, an attractive man who has radical views. I'm intrigued. I, I know kind of what to expect from Winifred Holtby, which is kind of sweeping epic descriptions of the landscape, intimate emotional details, and realistic characters. So I can't wait to dive into another Winifred Holtby. The other Winifred Holtby book I'm going to be reading is The Land of Green Ginger. This was published in 1927. Um, and it looks at uh, a character named Joanna Burton who grew up in Yorkshire away from her family uh, with just a, a, an active imagination and a passion for reading. And then it also follows her life um, after she gets married to a World War I vet who is struggling. So this is another one that I just am looking forward to relishing. Next up is Death of the Heart, The Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. Um, this was published in 1938. It is the story of Portia, who is a 16-year-old orphan, um, and what happens when she falls in love for the first time, and it, it's supposed to kind of expose the cruelties of society, um, especially conventional society. And this is promising to be kind of darkly humorous, witty, um, kind of like a private tragedy, but masquerading as a comedy of manners. So I, I don't know what to expect. I'm, I'm curious, partly because there's a blurb on the cover that says, Bowen is the link that connects Virginia Woolf with Iris Murdoch and Muriel Spark. So I am intrigued in all, about all of those writers and would love to see what the link is um, in Elizabeth Bowen. Then I'm planning to read Frost in May by Antonia White. This was published in 1933. It tells the story of Nanda Gray, who is a young girl growing up in a convent and what happens when she breaks the rules. Don't know what to expect from this. It looks like it's going to be tragic, intense, troubling. I am interested uh, and, and kind of afraid for this book. Then I'm planning to read The Night of Cheerful Countenance by Molly Keane. Um, this was the first thing she wrote. She was 17 years old when she wrote it and it was published a few years later in 1926. This is an Irish love story with a, with a love triangle. It looks like it's going to be kind of lighthearted, more enchanting than some of the darker books that I, I have on my TBR. And then last up, I'm planning to read several short stories by Zora Neale Hurston. Um, Zora Neale Hurston is one of the most famous black women writers from this era. And she wrote some novels, but she also wrote a lot of short stories. And I haven't necessarily selected which ones I'm going to read yet, um, but I am going to be reading them online. So I will be letting you know how that goes in March. There you have my March TBR. I've got a lot of things on my plate. I'm excited about every single book that I'm going to be reading next month. All of the read-alongs and read-a-thons and buddy reads that I'm going to be doing. It's just, I'm really looking forward to it. And I kind of can't wait for February to be over just so that March can get here. Tell me, what are you reading in March? Are you reading anything that I'm reading? And remember, there's always another book.